Okay, so once again, welcome to the South Hall Matters Community Forum. And, uh, you know, we don't have a fixed agenda. We just go with the flow. We want it to be a really safe environment that everybody can contribute and have their uh, contributions and views respected. And I think on the whole, it's a really successful meeting. Our chair is JS Bangu, and he is also chair of Clean Air for Southall and Hayes. So I'm going to basically say, who wants to go first? Who wants to share whatever they want to share? Oh, silence. Ange, Ange, I met the I met the um, people this afternoon. Good. And they they had already pre-planned a meeting with Berkeley Group. Oh, really? So, yeah. So it was excellent that I gave them half an hour. Yeah. And I explained everything, how we feel, etc. And it was after speaking, or really they were listening actually, and they've actually thereafter they went down to Barclay Group. So I'd love to hear um, what happened at that meeting. But uh, I explained everything to them, you know. So they did understand what we're going through, what we're living through, the hell and the nightmare that we're living in. I did explain everything to them. No, for so, the yeah, was... purposes of people who don't know, can you tell everybody who these people were that you met and uh, chaperoned around the site? No, we didn't go to we didn't go to the site, Andrew. All right. And the reason we the reason we didn't go to the site is because they'd already pre-planned a meeting at three thirty with Barclay Group and they were running a bit late. Okay. So I so made who are the, who are these people? What was this meeting about? Well, who I, these I made it I'm well it's a meeting that was originally um arranged by David Marsden. And In regards then, to and well they, they they're all sort of like you know town planners or their education is planning. Okay. Yeah. I'm a bit shocked because no one, I mean, I wasn't aware of it. I thought like at least the group members there would be told of that. No, what, what actually happened was that, first of all, it was David's baby. Okay, David, David Marsden was supposed to have a walk around with them. But for some odd reason, they actually planned 3.30 to meet Barclay Group. And I wasn't actually told that they're meeting Barking. So I was in London this morning. So I rushed in the afternoon and I actually got there before them, believe it or not. They, they must have turned up about 10 past three or something. But uh, no, everything that we are going through was explained to them. And I would like to furthermore find out how their meeting went with Barking. Because you've got to remember, it's come to light that Barclay Group have been uh, offering uh, or giving a lot of money to local groups and so-called charities with comments. <coughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, it would be good, Joe, if you can get some feedback from, you know, the leader or coordinator of the group. Sure. Sure. And we all know, and um, I'm sure they are well aware that um, Bartley Group will give them um, a nice sort of marketing um, of uh, presentation about, um, you know, all the plans for the site and how they are yeah. building affordable housing and providing employment and as part of their corporate social responsibility funding, um, mm. hope for the homeless uh, charity and so on and so forth so I think it's very good actually they met you before uh, and presumably uh, did they meet you on Beaconsfield Road so they can uh, see no. for themselves I met them I'm, I met them opposite the temple in Park Avenue 
Oh, right. Did you also explain to them just a little bit further down so the we, road, rail, the Southall Railway side is, is going to be redeveloped. And on Park Avenue, uh, there were some mature trees that have been cut down. I don't know if you've seen the photographs, Joe, but it looks terrible. So now there's hoarding up along part of Park Avenue. So, yeah, I mean, you know, this is just um, indicative, really, of what we are thought of as existing residents and um, the overdevelopment is matter. aggressive. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, please do get some feedback and perhaps at next month's meeting, you can share what they thought of their walk around and their meeting with Bartley Group. That would be very interesting to know. But I hope Jan doesn't mind me saying we had a meeting with Bartley Group on site back in, I think it was 2018. So they were very keen on showing us videos of what the site will look like in the future and, you know, how wonderful, some kind of utopia. And uh, we actually were accompanied on site and uh, the uh, employee drove us around. You're and the stench right. on the site was ridiculous. Oh, okay, okay. Absolutely terrible. And, you know, there was no real genuine understanding of what we were going through. And more importantly, what could be done to stop us being polluted in our homes? So, yeah, so, you know, I think it's, it's, it's always positive that people who don't live in Southall are showing interest and, um, you know, going beyond what they read about the site on the Internet and actually coming to visit in person. It makes a huge difference, I think, to see the site up close and personal to get a real sense of how people's lives are being badly affected. Well, I don't know if anybody saw the photographs of, um, sorry, by a resident, and uh, they live on Beakerton Road, and right behind their garden, a high rise is going up, and it looks horrific that they're going to lose their privacy, they're affected by the constru sorry, current construction works, the noise, the dust, um, but it looks so imposing so overpowering if it was me i don't know how i would be able to cope with that it's really depressing to see and you know imagining what the lives are like of those residents whose houses um are going to be dwarfed by a skyscraper you know, it's just um, just crazy that, you know, the local councillors have no empathy. And beyond that, I'm not actually speaking up for us in council meetings. And we certainly had experience, of, you know, Jan doesn't mind me mentioning her again. We met um, a councillor, and I've forgotten his name at the moment, but he's a councillor for Northfields. And his attitude when he first met us was, you can't prove that the air pollution is causing residents' illnesses. Anyway, we were invited into a resident's home, along with uh, Councillor Cam Nagpal. And this particular resident took us upstairs to their rear bedroom. They opened the window. It was quite a warm, sunny day, one summer. And the fumes from the site were proper knockout. And um, this particular councillor, he was giving it large, his face paled and he shut up after that because it was truly awful. And um, it, hasn't cha it hasn't changed. I was on Beagleton Road a few weeks oh. ago. You know where the care home is, Joe? Yep, yep. And there's a partly hoarding on the other side of the road opposite. And the stench there reminded me of a product my mum used to use back in the 70s called Evo Stick, whenever she was doing some sort of DIY in the kitchen, sticking down floor tiles. You know, it was a very, very pungent solvent smell. And I could smell it from, I believe it was Townsend Road, before I even 
walked yep. onto Beaker Road. It was so strong. Um, so I think the powers that be would like to think it's all over. No, it's not. It's ongoing. And I know from another member of Cash that they walk regularly along the gas, sorry, along the canal, and they can smell the gas works, particularly after it's been raining, you know, it stinks. Mm. Um, but what I would like to share with everybody, and this was amazing for us, back in October, we were invited by Brunel University to participate in a project called Bridging Lives, which um, explores two communities, both Southall and Salford near Manchester, living near contaminated land sites. So we went to the university back in October last year. Uh, they photographed us, very professional looking uh, black and white photographs and recorded our testimonies. And uh, we were invited to the launch of the exhibition on the 17th of March. And it was a fantastic opportunity for us to network with university academics and also key members of the community, such as the chair of Hayes Town Partnership. And um, yeah, it was an incredible experience to see along the wall our portraits, but also photographs of the site. And you can see how imposing these new uh, developments are and also the undeveloped land, which looks like a vast wasteland um, in front. So, you know, this is bringing our story, our testimonies to a whole new audience because the university had an open day earlier on in the week. So, you know, it was an opportunity for prospective students and their parents to find out about what is going on just a stone's throw away from Uxbridge. And also I used to work at um, the local college uh, on Beakersill Road and uh, students who were doing level three courses, many of them actually applied to Brunel University because it's not that far away. And uh, the tendency was to live at home and not to go too far away from home. So, you know, there is potential also, not just um, people further afield, but residents in Southall to become aware of our story if they aren't already aware of it. So what's also interesting is that the university have given us all the recordings and the photographs. So in early April, I will start to share the testimonies and the photographs. And the one that hit me hardest is a resident whose parents died during the remediation works and he had a memorial for them in his back garden and the construction works undertaken by Bartley Group actually damaged his memorial and that was really distressing to hear because he became very emotional recounting this it just makes me so angry that ordinary people, you know, we don't matter because we're not in power. We have no financial benefits to offer the decision makers. But yeah, I will keep on sharing um, those testimonies. You know, they're really powerful, including yours, Joe, and Saggy is as well. So I'm not discounting yours. Um, and mine and um, also um, Sufyan's. So what else is going on? This is really, really exciting for us. This is potentially a massive step forward for us because all along Ealing Council have denied our story. And although they got in Public Health England, Public Health England merely reviewed Bartley Group's air quality data and arrived at the conclusion that the air pollution was unlikely to have a toxicological effect on our health, even though we were saying it's causing wheezing, coughing, new case of asthma, worsening of existing case of asthma, um, and a whole raft of uh, respiratory issues. So what's really interesting 
for us and um, a massive step forward. Imperial College are actually going to be researching air pollution by locating chemical samplers, and they're very small and unobtrusive, so they won't be easy for anybody to find and um, you know dislodge or remove. And these samplers are going to be uh, installed in the vicinity of the Green Quarter, and that will also include residents' homes. So that's the stage one um, of the of the research, and the second stage is to actually test residents' blood and urine sample to sorry samples to identify exposure to air pollution and the whole kind of uh, purpose of the research is to see if there is a unique chemical signature for the gas work site. So I am strongly encouraging people to attend Imperial College's meeting. They are holding a meeting so you can find out more about the research and what they um, what their hypothesis is and what uh, their methodology uh, is by attending the meeting on Sunday the 16th of April. It's going to be held at the Dominion Centre on uh, South or Green from three o'clock to four o'clock. So I would encourage everybody attending the meeting tonight to spread the word, you know, tell your neighbours, tell your friends about it, because, you know, this is something we have been demanding for a long time that research takes place, um, you know, uh, of a medical nature to actually try and uncover what actually is going on, what can account for people saying that they're coughing, they're wheezing, um, they're turning up at their GP and GPs prescribing asthma inhalers and so on. So yeah, this is this is massive for us. And Imperial College have a very, very excellent pedigree in doing medical research. And I know because I'm um, a patient at Charing Cross Hospital and quite frequently they will ask me, um, you know, the, the consultant I see, you know, to participate in medical research. Okay, so, Another um, interesting, um, I suppose, you know, this is off the back of Ealing Council's um, Race Equality Commission uh, and the report is the Citizens Health Tribunal, which took place on Tuesday. And what was quite interesting for me is that, you know, they asked everybody to type in their email before actually joining the meeting which I duly did I didn't give the cash email I gave my personal email and initially my chat function was um, was uh, open because I was able to type in that I couldn't hear any sound uh, and then not long after that my chat function was disabled and I attended the meeting from uh, when it started six o'clock and uh, I left about I think 7 20 because I thought what's the point you've advertised that it's a meeting for the public to ask questions using the chat function on zoom yeah I am denied that right but also I would have to say that the language used by the panelists was very um inaccessible you know, I, I struggled to understand the points that they were making. Uh, it was very dull. Also, the slides um, were very dense with information. Also, the graphics on the slides, the, um, the charts, you couldn't read the information, you couldn't make sense of it, you know. So it, it was a very frustrating experience. And I quite honestly felt at the end of the day, at 7.20, I would be better off leaving this meeting and chilling out watching EastEnders. This is of no 
benefit. I cannot contribute to this meeting my experience of being polluted by the gas works and not just the gas works behind the back of where I live. There are two incinerators further afield, um, not that far away, but uh, in the west there are two asphalt plants which also pollute the area. So I wasn't able to share, you know, what is happening to me as a disadvantaged person living in uh, Southall. But anyway, just to move on very quickly, because I'm aware kind of like uh, I'm talking at you, there is going to be a meeting in Parliament on the 18th of April. And this has been organised by Lloyd Russell Moyle, and he's one of the MPs of Brighton. And expert scientists and residents with personal experience of being polluted by gasworks redevelopments have been invited to attend and share their testimonies. I reached out by email to John MacDonald, he's the MP for Hayes and Harlington, and Verenda Sharma to attend. So I haven't had a response yet. Don't know if I will receive a response, but Verenda Sharma back in 2021 set up an APPG, which is an all party parliamentary group on gas works. We met once, um, and if I can recollect correctly, this was in April 2021. That was the only time. And then the group was dissolved, uh, which was very frustrating uh, for cash, but not just cash, also Gasworks Communities United, which is an alliance of Gasworks uh, campaigners um, from Brighton, Worthing, uh, Hornsey, and other places uh, because Bartley Group own around about 30 plus gas works in London and the South East. So our experience is something that other residents in uh, other localities are worried about. You know, they are concerned that history will repeat itself where they live. And we certainly know by talking to residents in East London that they've been affected by the redevelopment of their gas works and um, have suffered health issues and likewise the residents in Hornsey. So, you know, this is a meeting that we urge John MacDonald and Verenda Sharma to attend to look at, you know, what can be done to make the remediation and redevelopment of gas works safer to protect public health. Now, I think possibly Joe, you'll be going to represent yes. cash uh, you, you know you are our chair and um you know it's important that residents and interested parties actually hear from us firsthand and um you know this is an opportunity to you know get this on the agenda given that um the dominant narrative is about air pollution from vehicles, but we are going under the radar, you know, residents are being affected by the redevelopment of contaminated land sites. Okay, so that's it from me for now. Um, so back to you, who wants to just share anything, ask questions, tell us about, you know, your experience of living in South or anything at all. Angela, at our last meeting, did we manage to do an FOI to the Mayor of London uh, and also the Housing Minister? What now, was the Parker FOI group, for? I think, they got a, I think the phase two, they received about £65 million from the public purse. Why is it that the Mayor of London and the housing minister is giving our hard earned money to Berkeley Group so they can fetten their, their wallets. See, I don't understand where, why <coughs> they're actually helping because Berkeley Group are a private company. Now, if they are using the public purse and then these flats are being sold, so are they returning the money back 
to the housing minister or to the mayor of London? This is a question that we have to ask. Something yeah, is not I, right. I, I, don't, I don't know. I didn't know anything about this. But yeah, I mean, it's a question um, that needs to be asked if uh, the money is coming from public we funds must. and um, yeah, to we must. have accountability. We must. It's very important. Yeah, it's very important because something is not right. Yeah. You're receiving money from the public purse and then you're selling these flats abroad and where, where's the profit going? <laughs> to, Bartley Group share, to Bartley Group shareholders for their dividends. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense though. Yeah. Does, I mean, the money I, I actually can... does, does the money actually disappear from the public purse not to be returned? And that's the question we have to ask. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's. Silence. I mean, maybe that's something you there and I silence. can you you and I can work on as um, an FOI request sure. and see you because know then it's actually silenced. if it's um, uh, responded none to. None of the religious. None of the, None of the religious organizations in Southall is actually helping the local community. No, so why I are mean, they silent? yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, I think, um, you know, if you like a separate issue, because Bartley Group obviously is a, a very wealthy uh, company, and as part of their community social responsibility. Uh, you know, are providing funds to community groups. And, um, you know, what was shared with me um, is that this money also trickles down to individuals to pay salaries in Southall. And people are dependent on this funding, you know, when it trickles down. But it's about buying off the community, isn't it? And as you say, silencing Certainly. people. And I was having a conversation 100%. with Sagir. And I said, um, it's um, alleged, you know, that, uh, sorry, that um, Bob Marley on his deathbed said, money can't buy life. And that's so true. 100%. 100%. And I would have to I say, think, I, um, I, I, I couldn't work for an organisation if knowing that my salary was in part funded by Barclay Group. And I tell you why, Joe. Yep. One night I walked into my children's bedroom and in the darkness, I could smell the gasworks in their bedroom. The windows were shut. The trickle vents were open, so the odour came in through the trickle vents. And that was the most distressing experience of parenting that I've had so far in my life because I couldn't do anything about it. But on principle, I would never knowingly receive any kind of funding uh, or do a job where my salary is uh, formed from Barclay Group's money. It's dirty money. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's a difficult one because we live in an area where people are struggling financially. But I just, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't accept their money. And, you know, as you know, the former chair who passed away rang me and uh, wanted to know more about, you know, while I was campaigning, what's it all about? I don't know what, you know, this odour is, and I'll come and stay in your flat. 
and put you up in a hotel. Um, and I basically said, in a nice, polite way, do one. Um, because, you know, you've got to have principles in life. And when I see how it's affected people, not just me, because I'm not just thinking about me, but Mr. Judge, who passed away. There's somebody else who passed away and was suffering breathlessness. You know, this is not right. And um, it's unjust. It's unjust for the community. Yeah. It's We've been sold out by people for a few pieces <clears throat> of silver. Well, it's a shame, really, because if, if you look at the bigger picture, and this was, this was one of the discussions we had this afternoon. When you have a problem, who do we go to? We go to our counsellors. They didn't want to know. Then we went to our MP. And he just laughs and smiles at everything. I'm all right, John. God, the rest. That's the feeling that we end up with after speaking to our MP. Now, the question you've got to ask yourself is, have we actually been sold out by our councillors and our local MP? We've certainly been sold out by Eden Council. We know that. Mm. Um, they, will, they will waste or throw our hard-earned money at making leaflets. And that's about it. Now, when you said that, I let me see if I get his name right. Mr. Pigley? Yeah, Tony Pitchley. Tony Pitchley. If Tony Pitchley wanted to send you to a hotel and he wanted to stay in your residence. That's right. Wouldn't it be easy? Wouldn't it be easier for him to call a caravan for the weekend, put it down in the gas works, and spend a Saturday and a Sunday there. <laughs> Good point, Joe. All right, but I'm sure, like he said, um, on the second visit that his lawyers had told him, or his insurance company had told him, that he cannot have any more discussions, if, if I'm right. That's right. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So About we, the air quality data, so, he wasn't going to provide that because he was told that he couldn't by his insurers. Of course. Of course, of course. So we know that they know that they've made mistakes in Southall and they can't turn the clock back. And if anything, um, I mean, I look at these community leaders, I look at the so-called organizations supposed to be there to protect the community, um, the so-called charities. They've all let us down, basically. I'm sorry to say. Don't apologise, Joe. It's factual. For money, for money. Yeah. I mean, I'm, as, I, as you obviously know, I'm, I'm brought up as a Sikh, yeah. in a Sikh family. And we always follow our parents. But what I'm looking at now, it's all about money. If God existed in a temple, then I'm sure my parents would have found God. Because my father was very religious. My mother was very religious. And they lost their lives. They, they never found God. Who... Who is there for us at the end of the day if these organizations are not standing with the residents? Who then do we go to? That's a question we have to ask ourselves. If the safeguard is not the councillors, it's not the MP of Southall, and it's certainly not the religious organizations, then we're doomed, aren't we? So this is why we have to fight for ourselves. 
And I've always said, as long as I live in Southall, I will keep standing up for my rights and also the rights of my fellow neighbours and residents. You know, because as far as I'm concerned, you know, they've tried to silence me. Well, that's not going to work. Hello, Arjan. How are you? Hi, Angela. Hi, everybody. How are you? Sorry I joined late. It's just um, I had some other things to do at 7 when I, so I couldn't join straight away. That's absolutely no, fine. Welcome. So the floor is yours. Yeah, no, I was just going to say this is why I joined this campaign, um, you know, and I thought, you know, I'm at a young age. And like, like we said in the like, previous meetings, that, you know, there's nobody like at my age at 20 years old who's taken part in you know in in this campaigning sort of stuff and um i only came to light with it over just a year ago that you know we're being taken for granted in southall and i thought that's why i better join like with you and everybody else in this call you know to make a change basically <laughs> you, you know if like joe said when i listened to joe was talking as like as soon as i joined the call you know who is who who can we turn to if, if to you know for them to take action because there's not nobody going to do it so we're going to have to do it ourselves absolutely and actually arjun i'm glad um, you joined the meeting because i was at work today and i saw the email from London Play. And it's really thanks to Arjan because he brought to attention of Southall Matters and the forum that the playground at Emerald Square in Southall is very neglected and run down. And I have to confess, I've only walked through there a few times and I did notice it looked a bit, you know, neglected, but didn't really pay much attention to it but he really focused my attention on this is an area where you know it's not right that it's so run down that children and their families simply don't use the playground and I know you said um you know you take your neighbor's dog for a walk and even the area allocated for that is very you know poor and neglected and I looks even, rubbish i can't even take my neighbor's dog to the wreck <laughs> you know there's so many dangers in the wreck that you know because she doesn't listen to me i have to you know keep her on the lead in even in emerald square you know where i thought i can you know take her out on a you know off her lead so she could have the freedom and i thought no i can't do that because it's nothing that's there's nothing safe it's not nowhere I can take her it's safe because one she's not trained well enough with me so I have to keep her on the lead at all time and two I thought you know Emerald Square is a place where you know she can at least um you know I can take her off a lead because it could be a safe and secure place but at the moment it's not not the case yeah. so that's why even in Emerald Square, I try and I tend to keep her on the lead. Yeah, but you know, thanks to you, I thought, you know, what can we do, uh, you know, to try and improve this situation? And just coincidentally, at the time we we're talking about Emerald Square, London Play were running a campaign on Twitter vote for London Saddest playground so I thought I know what I'll do and I think you encouraged me to do this go and take photographs so I took photographs and I um, responded to their tweet and said you know this is London saddest playground there's a large area which I think should be um, a multi-use games area but it's just a piece of tarmac with nothing really apart from I think one bench and then you've got um adjacent to that an area where you've got a climbing frame which is covered in graffiti and one uh, some sort of springy bouncer um, apparatus 
and uh, really worn, rotten benches. Um, and then I can recollect seeing a couple of very, very rusty bins and another bin that had just been left on the ground, full up with rubbish lying on its side. So, I mean, as a result of that, I had a conversation with um, member staff from London Play and she said, um, you know, we will support you. If you get a campaign going, we've got some funding. We'll see what we can do, you know, to, to get this situation rectified. Anyway, A2 Dominion, who are responsible for Emerald Square and the playground, they did get in touch, um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, to say um, that they were doing a site visit. But typically, you know, not much notice. Um, I got an email on the Saturday and they were visiting on the Monday. And I work on the Monday, so I couldn't um, um, attend their walkabout with, um, with their contractors to see, you know, what can be done. Anyway, I very same politely here, asked for some here. feedback. And I haven't received any feedback today as to, you know, what they discovered, what their assessment is, and um, what their recommendations are. Um, anyway, uh, then, London then, Play, the representative from London Play, she got in touch today. And um, because what I did last Saturday, she'd sent some leaflets with her contact details. So my daughter and I, we just did a quick walkabout Saturday afternoon when it had stopped raining. And she said, yeah, somebody's got in touch and they're really sort of fed up with how the playground looks and they're quite, you know, interested in seeing improvements and they're going to talk to their neighbours. So it's about power to the people. I think the assumption is, you know, people don't give two hoots because they're struggling and they're poor. And I think we have to turn that on its head. No, you can't treat us like shit because we're poor yeah and I can see that area being a place where it's a if you like an outdoor community hub where residents and uh, people who live on Emerald Square but even people adjacent to Emerald Square can take their children um, sit in you know all year round as long as it's not raining have a bit of a chin wag uh, you know it's good for you, you know, social connections, good for children to play outdoors. You know, that's an education itself. Older teenagers would benefit from, you know, a place where they can play football and basketball and have a properly lined, um, you know, court. And, um, you know, we have to keep, um, keep the pressure on because A2 Dominion, quite frankly, are talking a load of nonsense that they do monthly inspections and this that and the other well yeah if you did monthly inspections it wouldn't be the state that it's in you know you've neglected it because you know you're not bothered about um disadvantaged residents i mean i i know a bit you know because um i live uh in a flat and um the freeholder is um another useless housing association shepherd's bush housing I mean, they'll all blame, oh, you know, we don't get sufficient funding from central government, and I'm not going to deny that. But their customer service is absolutely woeful. And um, I actually had a phone call from Shepherds Bush Housing um, from um, a market research company, and I said, um, you know, my, my feedback is there, it's dire, you know, customer service. And uh, Shepherds Bush Housing Group would be better spending the money that they're spending on market research on actually training their staff to actually engage properly and be responsive. Because the only time really that they are responsive is when you are in arrears with them. You know, they're on your case. But when you're asking them like where I live, Lovely Ealing Council has introduced a CPZ on the adjacent road. And it's causing an issue for my road, yeah? Because it's a private road. Um, and it's all already causing a problem. People are parking on my road who shouldn't be parking. So I turned up yesterday and um, somebody's in my parking space. 
So same thing for my neighbour, you know, somebody's in his parking space who shouldn't be parked there. And um, I've tried to get this sorted out with Shepherd's Bush, but um, the person who's, uh, if you like the housing officer, I don't know the exact designation for my road, um, hasn't responded recently. So whether they still work for the organisation, whether they're off sick, but there's no out of office reply. It's just absolutely dreadful. But go, sorry, I've digressed. Going back to Emerald Square, what I would say, uh, you know, we need people to get involved with a campaign, not just people who live on Emerald Square, but people who live local. Email cash after this meeting if you want to become a participant, because the more people, even if, you know, you're not doing anything active, but just by being a member, that puts the pressure on a Dominion, you know, and I will keep tweeting um, because that also puts the pressure on as well because by remaining silent it doesn't actually solve anything and it allows them to just continue uh, neglecting the needs of residents who pay rent and service charge okay Arjan did you want to speak again hold on Arjan's got his hand up no go go ahead I'm just going to log into the computer. Um, on this, all there. Welcome, all right. welcome, Go Arjun. ahead, Joe. Welcome, yeah. welcome, Arjun. Thank welcome, Arjun. Thank you, Joe. Um, Thank I you, just Joe. wanted to say, when when Imperial College are coming to the Dominion Centre, yeah, are they oh, actually when? going to do the blood tests? Are they? No, I know when, but are they going oh, to yeah. actually be? Are they going to be actually carrying out the blood tests? No. At at that meeting no. or not? No. Okay. They will okay. be explaining all about the study how okay. they will be conducting the study yep and explaining you know why they're doing the study and yep the outcomes so it's a really good chance to get in-depth knowledge on the study and what it's all about so i would encourage everybody to come along to the meeting it's a sunday it's only an hour of your time between three and four on the 16th of April. Well, I, I had another suggestion. Yeah, go ahead. After, after we after we go to this meeting with them. Yeah, I think the next move is we must make some leaflets and hand them out. Or, or I mean, you know, what, what are we going to do? Are we gonna are we gonna knock on every single door? Or are we gonna make leaflets so people do come for their blood test? Yeah. Joe. Because you got, you got Joe, problems on your side. Yeah. Yep. Queen okay. Road, because, Featherson can, can, Road. Yeah. Can we leave that to another meeting? Because I, I you know, tell you why, okay. because it's really important that we don't do anything that compromises the study. So I'm not ignoring what you were saying but this is not the forum to go in depth. So, you know, I would just say, reiterate, you know, come along to the meeting on the um, 16th of April. Okay. No, how I do, are um, gonna, yeah. How are we going to inform the people? That's what I'm saying. You knock on their door. How are we going to inform the rest? You knock on we their have door. To knock on doors. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, mate. That's the best method. Yeah. Writing leaflets uh, hasn't worked, as you know, from the Eating Independent Network. We spent days and days of our free time doing that. Most people, when they get leaflets, I don't know what the research is, but there is a high percentage don't even bother reading them. They chuck it, go straight in the bin. So the only way, if you want to get your point of view across or inform people, and there are many people of diverse nationalities and languages here, you know, evenings, weekends go there maybe yeah a leaflet you can maybe you know have a brief little thing on there and hand there but one needs to talk to them as well and inform them and that that is the best way to gather people for whatever cause imperial college is doing if you want them to attend that dominion meeting on the 16th that is the best way or you, yeah, you could advertise yeah. it on desi radio but i'm not sure whether they have, we've got the funds they to do that. Us. Yeah, but I, I agree, no, Saki and, and Joe. I think we've got to um, 
knock on doors, talk to our neighbours. Everybody in this meeting can do the same no thing. Angel. Talk to your neighbours, say Imperial College are doing research into air pollution. No Come angel. along to the meeting on 16th April, find out exactly what they're doing and, uh, you know, and how it could potentially benefit cash moving forward. But, you know, yeah, I no would angel. say I we, need, we need to do that I because think. our community doesn't no operate angel. solely on social media messaging. No, 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 Angie, I was going to hit you with another one. Thank you, Sagir, for that. I do understand what you're saying. Can we, now this is where the catch is, okay, remember that. Can we contact, please, Punjab, Punjab, Punjab Radio, is it? Or Punjabi Radio? Punjab Radio and Desi Radio, those are the two main Punjab ones here, aren't they? And, and can we also contact Desi Radio? And then, because they're community radio stations, remember my words, okay? Yep. This is a community announcement. Angela? Yeah. I would suggest that an email is sent out to both of those parties, uh, to Punjab Radio and also to Desi Radio. Yeah, I'm going to make a note. And if, if, if then, Angela, they do not help us, then they are not for the community, are they? Well, they're not part of the community. That's right. Yeah, 100%, Joe. I agree with you that totally. The Thank job you. is, the license Thank they've you. got is to yep. add to the community. It doesn't matter what cause. They're, they're not Thank there you. to judge whether that cause uh, is bad or good. As long as an X amount of community members are interested in it, they're supposed to be a platform for the community to disperse knowledge, awareness. Thank you. And the other... The other idea that I've got, Angela, can we can we <coughs> then use uh, Sagir, if we can use our microphone and mm. go go around, I don't mind using my vehicle to go around and to tell people to attend, because I think it's vital, Angela. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Good a idea. Lot, a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people turn up to this. Yeah. Everybody everybody I speak to is telling me they've got problems, mm -hmm. health problems. And they go to their doctor. And the doctor gives them paracetamols. Yeah. <laughs> Work that one. So give you know more about this. Come on, tell us about it. Well, a, a paracetamol is a placebo, it has a placebo effect, doesn't it? It, does, it doesn't, it's not going to kill someone. So uh, when someone takes something from a, a professional like that, 50% yeah. of them are going to start feeling uh, better immediately. Plus, um, <laughs> the doctors are, you know, like I think the way Sufyan probably would know more about this, but, uh, you know, local doctors, GPs and local authorities, the health service are supposed to collate a lot of you know information in regard to a sudden increase of certain illnesses like colds. or That's how... You know, they spot trends and are able to prepare. So uh, maybe they've been told not to actually highlight that. It'd be interesting to know what the doctor's notes say about that patient, why they came in. Was it just a headache or was it because they actually did say it's the air pollution? Because if, let's say, you know, there's all of a sudden every single surgery in Southall around this area, five, ten people go there, then it is a duty for whoever the, I think is it the Hammersmith and uh, Fulham or Ealing, wherever, health, sorry, that's the old name for it, isn't it? I don't know what's happened. The NHS has probably been broken down to more local units, but they're supposed to pick it up and pass it on to central government. Maybe they don't want those figures to go there, so. Yeah, but I think, you know, these, these are really good ideas. So, you know, I'm more than happy to see if, Punjabi and Desi radio stations will do some kind of and announcement I'll... or whether we can go on to Desi and explain yeah. that this meeting is so happening. It's you... a chance to find out about Imperial College's uh, health research. Did you not yeah. have a problem with Desi radio last time, though? Last time you actually went on them? Well, yeah, that's when um, Councillor um, Anand and, when um, and, 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 and some other councillor yeah, went on. Uh, no, not councillor. Um, What's his name? Rajinder, I think his name is uh, part of um, Let's Go Southall. Yeah. yeah. But, but no, I mean, I think we could try. But I, I, I like the fact, actually, what Joe said, 
you know, and I'll get a bigger um, PA system, you know, to drive around. But I think also knocking on doors and talking to people and saying, look, come to this meeting, you know, you might have experienced various health issues. Find out about the research that Imperial College will be doing into the air pollution and, um, you know, what they hope to achieve from uh, the research. Because it's certainly something that has never happened before. This is ground bait, ground oh, yeah, I mean, Imperial College. There's been no, it. you know, mm -hmm. research into, you know, the air pollution in the vicinity um, of the <laughs> gas work site. I mean, there might have been research done into um, occupational health effects, but not, you know, public health. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is for me very very interesting can i go to jan because jan has a hand up and she's been waiting very patiently jan hi uh, good evening Oops. everyone um just one thing i was going to say and uh it might be an idea to put something on my next door because i think then we might get to um let people know about the meeting yeah definitely jan uh, uh, angela you, and I'm not just, I'm also i'm just gonna i've got a message mm. that you know, I made sure it's been approved by the researcher because I didn't want to say anything that is going to um, compromise the ethics of the study. So I've got to approve the wording. So I have got a message that I can put out on Nextdoor as well as our Twitter and Facebook accounts and see if we can get a conversation going. Um, but I suppose really time is of the essence to let people know now so they can put the date in their diaries and um, hopefully Sunday afternoon is a good time, you know. And, um, you know, I think, you know, we have to put as much effort into this as we did for our very first meeting, you know, many moons ago back in 2018 when we turned up to... Um, the restaurant, or oh, what's it called? Not TKC, Roxy, Roxy New Tandoori. And there are around about 50 people at this meeting, all sharing very similar experiences about the impact of um, the air pollution from the gas. And this is taking it further. Imperial College are very reputable in the research. Oh, definitely. They They're one of the leading universities in the whole world. I mean, um, in yeah. my days, when I was at university, Imperial College was part of University of London, but now it isn't. It used to be third, so it used to be either Oxford or Cambridge, you know, yeah. one or two. Yeah. Now, I think uh, Imperial College has to replace one of them. It's the second one, and it's world-renowned for research. So very, very academic. Um, the You know, the professors and the research staff and the academic, uh, when they say something, the, the academia, the, you know, the people involved in that do listen, journals, you know, like Scientific of American, um, uh, Sci Scientific American New Scientist, which I can remember from my sixth form days, they're yeah. still around. So, you yeah. know, it, it, and that's, that is how, you know, the word actually spreads through papers and uh, through the academia and eventually maybe someone in the government, maybe not the local government, but central government will have to, you know, they can't ignore it. I mean, this is how yeah. everything yeah. really starts. It's just yeah. the ball rolling. Yeah. I mean, this is not to be defeatist right because mm -hmm. you know i will just carry on campaigning as long as i live in south mm -hmm. but part of me thinks there will be a legacy that research will prove that we were right all along yeah of course of course so mm -hmm. long after you know i've departed planet earth <laughs> that research will be there you know for all to access um, and it will, you know, sort of vindicate us that we were not troublemakers, that we were standing up for our rights as citizens not to be polluted, not to have our health compromised <coughs> because somebody decided that overdevelopment was good for our health. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you're 100% uh, right, Angela. I mean, look at it. I think it was just a couple of months ago, towards the end of last year, they found out one of these big oil companies, I don't think it was Shell or BP, one of the American ones, way back 30, 40 years ago, they'd done 
they own scientists done research and they said like you know fossil fuel and things what we're doing at that particular time in the 60s and 70s will have such a profound effect obviously the word you know climate change hadn't been coined but similar to that that it will be in fact they, su they suppressed it and you know 40 50 years later it's come to light because obviously that's that was their game they wanted to sell fossil fuels in many forms and and that's what's that's what's happened so see it's it's, it's a, you can't argue with facts in life you could you know manipulate facts but facts are facts and uh you know studies like this research like this there's no argument to it yeah absolutely this is why i say it's it's you know a massive step forward for us you know it's taken years to get to this point and as you say <laughs> you know sort of empirical research um you know is an evidence base that i hope will stand the test of time mm -hmm. and um you know it's not reliant on bike group whose air quality monitoring um you know is is kind of questionable in terms of um you know they did no baseline testing before mm -hmm. they started earthworks there's gaps in the data because an air quality sensor broke down it took time to get the replacement part you know to source that uh, 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 sorry to interrupt you Angela but remember uh, they did have a uh, Ealing council had three uh, big units if you were if you were to go down Beaconsbury Road and take that little alley between uh, Blair Peach School and the Barclay Group site yeah. right in the corner right where the canal is they on in Blair Peach where the pond is they used to have this massive uh, air monitoring unit. They had a similar one outside Lidl. I think there was one maybe in Greenford. Mysteriously, some app, just before the work's officially been announced and to start, they all disappeared. And uh, mm. Blair Peach got bribed, actually, and Miss uh, Puri, who was the head teacher there, and uh, I remember because my daughters were attending there, uh, you know, the, the, the full year finished, and by September when we went there, about uh, maybe about 20% of the playground had been covered with, you know, the raised... Uh, uh, raised soil for gardening, and it was all yeah. sponsored by Blair, uh, Barclay Group. Yeah, uh, and I was thinking, Jesus, it's so dangerous to have these wooden, you know, about probably three, four high, and uh, uh, you know, kids used to run around freely. They're going to bump into it, you know. They've also ranges with the injuries, and it, unbeknown to me, I later found out it was Barclay Groups uh, who actually yeah. sponsored yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a bit of a bribe, wasn't it, really? Because they're they're here, that. here, there, and everywhere, and yeah, you know yeah, their yeah. their um, <laughs> infiltration, if you like, of schools yeah. is quite yeah. insidious. And, and was it, I mean, was I read, it? yeah, I read uh, the newsletter um, from Heverson High School last Friday, and there was mention that a group of six <laughs> formers <laughs> went on a site visit to the Green Quarter. <laughs> but back in 2018, I drove down Montague Way, and the stink from the site was proper knockout strength and on that day a parent shared in our closed facebook group that their child's asthma had become worse but not only that the child could smell the odor from the gas works in the school hall mm. so powerful and potent um and it seems that you know people in positions of authority in school have um short memory short of memories course. really Listen, well, and um, it's not it's not just um Feverston high school i went on a visit to guru nanak sorry guru nanak sikh academy and uh the assistant head said um one day the air pollution was so bad so many staff <laughs> were phoning in sick they almost have had to close the school but not long afterwards, <coughs> Bartley Group held a careers event in the school. That's the funny thing. Uh, in, with Blair Peach, I think, wasn't it, the chairman or the CEO of Bartley Group that actually became a parent, gov uh, you know, part of the governing body. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was uh, co-opted uh, onto the government. <laughs> he, he was, um, I don't know if he still works for Bartley yeah. Group. The site manager, Richard Watler, 
Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's such a massive conflict of interest. And yeah, um, yeah. yeah I mean, he's no longer in that role. Okay, okay. But yeah, it's all part <laughs> of um, keeping the community in their place, ignorant I'm... and um, unaware that this company, which is so benevolent in funding school fairs and visits and Christmas fates, are killing the community. Oh, with Blair Pete, it's, it's, they, they, they're absolutely ruthless and aggressive mm -hmm. in what they do and oh, so how they do the, it. Oh, they've got the funding, they've got the PRT behind them. What they were doing with Blair Peach as well was every sort of summer, they would get the big JCB diggers and stuff like that, <laughs> park, uh, display them in the playground and let the kids go. You know, silliness. Yeah, but, you know, I think, you know, we have tried to educate the community and say, this is what's going on. Do you really want this company within your child's school? You know, you should be asking the leadership team of that school why they feel it's appropriate when your home is filled with the fumes from the site and your child's coughing and spluttering. And you mm -hmm. turn up to your GP and all your GP can do is prescribe an inhaler. <laughs> no, my GP doesn't even do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Well, apparently, I've asked people you know, <coughs> because I, I, go with my, uh, I go with my grandma sometimes to some of her appointments at my GP. It's just, you know, just across the road from Emerald Square here. You get one near King Street, Belmont Medical Centre, I'll go there. And um, <coughs> somebody was there for asthma, and I asked, oh, what they did, and they're, um, sorry for, like, you know, like, the lack of breathing because of that. And they said, well, the doctors, they said the doctors, uh, I asked, what did the doctor say to you? And they, they were like, the doctor said, I'm fine. They can't see anything wrong with me. And then just they just went home with nothing. Yeah. It's Despite just, the coughing affecting their lives. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there is, um, you know, because I had persistent coughing. Same here. And like, um, that is, that is, um, that is um, you know, a variant of mm. asthma. Sometimes I, I prescribed an inhaler. Yeah, sometimes I get like dry cough. But I don't really, I don't really go to the GP because I know they're not going to do anything. And I, we got, and I'm lucky to have the things here at home to help me like get better. But thing is, what about people outside that rely, don't have the things they need at home, and they go to the GP and then they say they they've been prescribed with paracetamol or an inhaler or nothing at all, and then you're going, you're, you know, you're going home and you're going to have this cough. What's going to happen in the future? When you when you know like people get a bit older, you know, it's just like people die. It's pure and yeah. simple. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly what it is. Even the GPs, yeah. What it is, yeah. It's it's the community that we've got. The community doesn't know its rights. It's a poor community. Doesn't you know has have any influence around the big sort of picture of say London, and you 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 won't find this. You know, it's not just unique to Southport. It, it happens to every single community in the whole world, but in the UK as well. Uh, all right, the mix of people we've got here are maybe from a, you know different ethnic back, back various ethnic backgrounds, but you know indigenous uh, people from England. You go in Wales or you know up north or even East London. There's loads of cases where people you know who are at a lower sort of end of society don't aren't that educated. Uh, they're more worried about, you know, waking up in the morning, going to work and, you know, putting a bread and butter on for, for the night, you know, for the family. Uh, they don't have, you know, time for such things. Or they don't even know about it. Yeah, have, have, I mean, have you noticed none of these things actually happen in uh, affluent parts of the community? First of all, why was the gas centre actually built here in Southall in the first place? You know, way back, you know, obviously, I think there weren't that many people living here. And it was probably really poor people anyway. At that time, you had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, immigrants. Yeah, the Irish or the Welsh. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, so these things have always been put where people, it doesn't matter if they die. 
I'm sure even 150 years ago when this was put up, uh, they knew the, what the side effects were, obviously not to the extent that we know now, but obviously they knew it was going to damage their health and people are going to die early. But, you know, it doesn't matter. It needs to be done for the greater good of the country. But let's put it in an area where people are expendable. It doesn't matter if they die. Yeah, similar in Hillington, similar. actually. You know, Hayes was traditionally industrial. So down the road from where I live, there are two asphalt plants. They're not located in, <coughs> in um, you know, or Ricelip or Uxbridge. Mm -hmm, exactly. They're more affluent parts of the sure, sure, sure. but, but Angela, it gets worse. All right, this is just off the press, okay? Mm. In Crewe, I believe it's Cheshire County, yeah? Is it Cheshire Crewe County? Crewe somewhere up north, mate. Yeah, yeah. Manchester yeah. and all that. Two, when I used to go two, leave the... Two, it was one of the yeah, they, so, yeah, just below Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Something there, yeah. It was one of the stations before two, Leeds. Two, 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 263 homes yeah. have, been, have been doomed. For what? Because they were built on contaminated land. Seriously, now well, rec the, well, recently are there new people, builds like yes, new builds, they're proper homes though, you know, posh ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. 263 homes, they can't get mortgages, <laughs> they can't get mortgages, they can't sell the stock. Yeah, yeah of course. The Look, people yeah. are doomed. The people are doomed who purchased them. Well, that's probably similar to what's going on behind your back garden, mate. What you and Angela in this discussion, we're discussing mm -hmm. what's going to come out 30 years time. It's actually yeah. come out today. <laughs> yeah. This is <laughs> congratulations, both of you. This is actually come out today. I've mm. just received a phone call while mm. you guys were having your conversation. Mm -hmm. 263 homes have been. That's doomed. a lot on my road. There's 150. Yeah. So, oh my god, that's a lot. Lot. That's a lot of land. And a lot of people affected, even 256, say, there's four or five people living here, looking about a thousand people being affected. Ooh, that's a... The only reason... That's, that's big news, The only mate. reason I'm saying this, it's, Sagid, the only way I, reason I've dropped, put this in is because mm -hmm. the discussion we're having this <coughs> evening, if mm -hmm. we're thinking ahead of 30 years, 40 oh, years... Oh, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. Angela said, obviously, like, uh, the research that's going to be done by Imperial College Although it might not bear any fruitation during her lifetime, she'll carry on. But no, 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 she, no, no, she's no, right, 100%. No, no, no. 5, 10, 15 years, that might become, you know, something that then maybe the government there picks up and people become aware. I mean, that happens with every single cause. Initially, people... But, but Sagid, what I'm saying is, it's, it's in the news today. Okay, it's on the internet. So what was the site, Joe? Was it a gasworks site? It, it, it's, in, it's, it's in the countryside. Yeah, but what sort of site? Landfill site? Gasworks? Well, we don't know. We don't, we, don't, we don't know. But what we're saying is that we're having a discussion here this evening about Southall. Uh, and we know there's pov Southall's poverty stricken. But yet, in a nice amphitheatre area in Crewe, in the countryside, People have yeah. just been doomed tonight. They can't sell their properties. This, this was on the news today, did you say? Hmm. Okay. A friend well, of mine I have just to, rang I'll you. I have to while, research while this. Guys, while you, yeah, exactly. While you guys were speaking, a friend of mine just rang me and told me that it's everywhere. It's the same. Yeah. I remember when they, when they were building Terminal 5. Okay. Now, when they were building Terminal 5, one company had to dig every single garbage that was there because they themselves had filled that in. It was a landfill. Yeah. Okay? So they. Guys, I just found it. Move. It says here, sorry to interrupt you. It says here, homes on huge estate could be worthless due to botched planning permission. Councillors were furious with the property developer with one calling for the application to be refused because this developer, it could be argued, has put profit before compliance and assurance. The homes yeah. of residents on a large <laughs> Cheshire housing estate could be deemed worthless because the appropriate planning permission was not granted. 
the homes are also on potentially contaminated land it has been claimed. It, this is shocking, isn't it? And those people, those residents would have bought those homes in good faith. Yeah. And they're now yeah. worthless. And not just that, potentially their health is affected it's if the land hasn't been capped off properly or remediated. New, it says here, we can't sell our worthless new build homes after developer put on huge estate on contaminated land. Shameful. Yeah. Shameful. They built 263 shameful. properties on potentially contaminated land. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so this could be, well done, Jan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Jan, this could yeah, be the well story done, of Southall, of, you know, the story of the gas works yeah. in years to come. Yeah. Because, you know, no, I think we said, how, how did they decontaminate uh. in such a short time? And I believe Ealing Council Maybe. signed off the decontamination in 2021. We you know, know, why Anne. is it, know, why is it that the area still properly. stinks, you know? So... Angela, you it's want just a you want to Jan see and Joe, it's probably just a matter. just a matter of time yeah. that a journalist will be writing a similar kind of story about these uh, high rises and how uh, you know there are still pockets of contaminated land, and of course that's going to impact upon the value, and that's you know it's obviously really Angela. upsetting for I just, I just homeowners can't... who bought these homes in good faith. To find out if, that they're worthless. If, yeah, I'm just going to say this now. If, I mean, how are they going to pay back their mortgage? I mean, surely the government has to step in. They can't. They're doomed. They're doomed. It's, it's the same as London when they when they were putting those blocks on the side of flats, remember? And they were hazardous. They used to catch fire. Do you remember? And then uh, the government stepped in yeah. to save the bacon at the end of the day because the developers, obviously, are the government's friends. And not only that... The situation we have in South Wales is exactly the same. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to the Imperial University's outcome of their health checks in South Wales. Yeah, yeah. And for I sure. think we should work on this. We really have to work oh. because there is nobody in South Wales who is worthy of helping us. That's the conclusion I've come to. Everybody's money minded <laughs> in South Wales. Then Joe, we just about have to do it, do it for ourselves. It. Keep reaching Thank out to Thank people. You. You know, it's very important and vital that we yeah. contact the radio stations and we also understand if there really are community radio stations or are they just there for commercial interests. Or, I mean, as like you say, the Labour Party radio yeah. station, one of them. I don't know about the other. Radio. I did call them the Labour Party radio station. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you. Um, this is why, you know, we're not going to stop just because no. people we've elected. I mean, personally, obviously, I didn't elect any of these councillors. Uh, you know, but Thank you for they've been vote. elected in Thank good you. faith by, obviously, vote. the majority of the community. And... They are letting down the electorate well, quite yeah, significantly. They have. And you know what? My, my, my old work colleague <clears throat> told me, she said, um, you know, when you see dog shit on the pavement, do you step in it or do you go mm. around it? So we go around I have it. told you that there's always an alternative way to achieve your goal. Oh, Angela, may I come in? I've just Googled well, that particular Mr. story Mr. that uh, that uh, yeah, Joe has, uh, yeah, that Joe has said, and it's actually in Cheshire, 263 homes in a in a big estate, and it, the council actually sort of went through the same hoo ha, exactly what happened there. They knew about the contamination, but you know, through work with the developer, they, it's, it's not Barclay Group in this, but countryside partnership must be some private organisation. Yeah, yeah. Actually finally, you know. They actually approved it, and then now it was only built in 2018, so five years ago. And now they realise it's so contaminated, the houses aren't worth anything. No one's, mm. So yeah, I mean, I've, I've just had a brief look at it, but yeah, Joe, you're 100% right on this particular one. Thank you, Sigi. Yeah, I mean, what what I can do is share the article. Yeah, I mean, with it's a, mm -hmm. a gust. 
who are key to getting this um, contaminated land meeting organized, hosted by Lloyd Russell Moyle. And I, I'll say to him, you may want to reach out to these residents in uh, Cheshire <coughs> yep. because, yep. you know, this is very current. You know, they are so severely affected that their homes are worthless. And um, this indicates really a lack of scrutiny, a lack of, you know, regulation, you know, and this situation, unless there is some sort of change, maybe underpinned by legislation, it is doomed to happen again. So I will, if after the meeting, get the links to the stories and share them with the members of Agars and say, you may want to do a bit of digging around, seeing if there is some kind of campaign group uh, on this well uh, housing estate and invite them to the meeting on the 18th of April. Um, yeah, that would be the these opportunity counsel, for them to tell their story these and invite their, invite their MP as well. Mm -hmm. These councillors uh, in, in, in crew should be sent to prison. I mean, yeah, Joe, it's exactly what's happened here. Yeah. yeah, these yeah, councillors mm -hmm. should be sent to prison and also the council officers who signed and, this off should go to prison. Mm -hmm. But, you know, one because thing, man. Enough, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. May I just come in quickly, Joe? Uh, in, sure. Interesting point with, with our causes here in Southall is that, I mean, what what actually, how did they define that, you know, it was contaminated, obviously through monitoring and uh, scientific research. So it'd be interesting to see what kind of scientific research uh, was it, you know, was it monitoring people like the Imperial College are going to do that by taking the blood samples, was it air samples, was it soil samples, like what Brunel is doing. So I'm, I'm sure it's probably a combination of uh, those factors. And if that has, you know, swung the way to this conclusion, then by all means, well, let's see what happens with last site here. Or do, do we need, uh, what, means... what do we need to prove that, that you know, it is within safe limits or it isn't? As I said, data, data is one means... thing which can be manipulated. You know, like for, a, say, when you're doing a chart, the steepness of it, if you stretch the chart, it's, it looks like a gradual rise. But if you squeeze it and it looks like a you know so but it's just, it all depends on the scale on the on the x-axis and the y-axis and many people don't really get that so you know similar with any kind of data Barclay group obviously are very clued on they have very educated people scientists they have links with universities themselves pr companies and you know the equipment we don't even know what kind of equipment they're actually using it could be you know tuned just to ignore certain things and just start or you know, like a like a slot machine where the, the local chip is used to rigged. tune it, so you don't actually win anything. Sagi, the word is called rigged. Rigged, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. That's what that, that is the old school word for it. Exactly, rigged. <laughs> and you know, it's it's us lot. Yeah, you're right. It's for I'll us lot you, to carry on. I'll tell you what I think should happen at this stage. Mm -hmm. And I put this to our organisation. Mm -hmm. We now have to get Brunel University and Imperial College to work together. And Imperial, and Imperial College exactly. to work together. And also also to contact the council and crew. Mm, I understand to find that. Out exactly. Yeah. This is how this is how we well, have to do it. Okay. Well, well they don't have so to contact Brunel the council, Lander, but you know. They don't have, no, council's not going to be for yeah, yeah. Well they'll find out yeah, which organization is. actually monitored that. I mean, yeah. if we go delve into exactly. the story, I'm sure we'll be able to pick up the names, but for those people who how are in was, that particular field, it'll be quite easy. How was the can of worms opened? Mm, okay. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, we know we, we know there's a can of worms in Southall, okay? We've got we've got all our councillors on the side of Healing Council. Yep. We've got our council officers, which are involved, okay? There's an old saying in English, okay? And I used this word this afternoon when I met this team from London. I said, money talks, bullshit walks. It's very simple. Money talks, bullshit walks. I wanted to bring this to your attention. 
Mm. I've got one of those. I've got one of those expensive Hoovers, which I hate. Yeah. Um, I don't <laughs> even remember the name, but it comes on television. You know what? Uh, Dyson. I'm about, all right. <coughs> Wags or Dyson. Dyson. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was my wife's choice, not mine. I love Henry. You know, Henry's the best Hoover <laughs> in the world. Anyway, every time it fills up, Ange, it's my job to go and empty, empty yeah. it, okay, into a bag, yeah. and then I tie a knot and I put it into the rubbish. And then I look at it and I give it a clean with water. The amount of dust in my house, I can't tell you. And I'm serious. Yeah, I believe it you. Is, believe you. Yeah. It is horrible, horrible. I'm That's from the gas works, Joe. All the yeah. digging that they're doing, yep. all the mm. construction. Mm. Yeah. If you go if you got a bag hoover. But uh, you're not going to check what's in the bag, right? But because in the Dyson, you actually see what you've collected. It's okay? shocking. It's shocking what you it's find. Shocking. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Disgusting. And, and, and that's the And, and you're I... inhaling those fine yeah. particles, Joe. Yeah. And it's not just going into your afternoon. not just going into your vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it's going lungs. into your lungs and into and, your bloodstream and into yeah. your heart and uh, brain and pancreas. And, 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 and uh, what you've got to forget is the filters in those uh, machines are only an X amount of, in, you know, in, in diameter and width. They only catch a certain size particle below that, the micro dust, which is what is uh, being emitted from the site below Beacon Street Road, is too fine. Yeah, you very, know? very fine. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's damaging, you, it's the you know, it's, the it's linked screen. to now it's dementia. Type two diabetes. No, but it's on the screen. On, extremely harmful. On the television, it's actually on the screen of the TV. It, it, it just, oh, it's like oh, as if it's like a magnet. Oh, the listen. Screen, the one of the obvious, screen. one of the obvious ones is I, I don't know whether we should get lawn and travel. You know, my neighbour, he loves his cars and uh, he's cleaning them every other week. But the amount of dust that gathers there, I mean, I don't particularly care about my one, but honestly, you clean it properly. If, you know, using the shampoos, whatever the kind of whatever they use, within a few days you can see, it, especially if they're darker coloured cars. Honestly, so where does it come from? It never used to be the case way back. You know, I could say 20, 30 years ago when I was younger. So where is this dust coming so, from? Yeah, yeah. it's the it same. Contains? Same with my when car. I, well, you, That's a black it, car. When I started in the morning, it, yeah, yeah, and I wash and it. The, the, the and black it's the same thing. on the on on the actual wipers. You yeah. see it on the wipers in the yeah. morning. So, so you, you could draw two, a couple of conclusions from, from that particular Joe and Angela. Is a now there's you know building works going on, and all right that dust yep. whatever the gathering on the car is actually non toxic, is fine, but it's being caused by them. So they should, in theory, be paying, <laughs> maybe giving vouchers or paying for someone to clean those cars. Because if, you, if them, you're cleaning your car them, once a month and now you're going to do it every week. That is due to that, and that is in the law. You, you the council knows it. The builders and developers are supposed to make appropriate compensation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would take issue. Well, I asked them. I, asked them I would say it is harmful because those mm. particles, particulate matter, mm. you know, enters your bloodstream and it causes serious damage course, to the blood vessels and the organs. Sure, and sure. you know what you said about cleaning cars. This was something that. Barclay Group offered mm -hmm. to do, mm -hmm. but they never actually followed through on it. Yeah, there yeah, was all talk at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it, and no were, action. They were told, Angela, they were told by, by people like Sagira. Uh, what's his name? Jack Sangira. Jack Sangira, sorry, Jack Sangira. They were told by people like him. They were told by people like Mr. Sharma. They were told by people like our uh, useless absolute useless counsellors, don't worry, they're only, they're only Indian, they don't matter. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm not going to tell you who said this. I'm not going to tell you who who said this to me. Or well, it was actually said, okay. that particular uh, sentence. Well, Joe, Joe, was it a well, counsellor who said if you, that? If you, if you, if you wait for it, yeah, what I was told, okay, mm -hmm. by an Englishman, all right, wearing a uniform, so you get the hint. You'll get the hint, Angela. Yeah. That we're only commoners. Yeah, yeah. 
That's our lives how, don't matter. That's, how, that's what he said to me. He said that we're commoners and he was wearing a uniform. Yeah. And then I had to explain to him. I said, no, we're not commoners. We're human beings. Okay? And we've been well, mistreated. That's deep, mate. That's deep. Yeah. Yeah. Say, to hear well, Jer Jeremy Corbyn, you, you know, said when somebody said, well, you know, why, why isn't anything being done mm. about what's going on in Southall? And this was what was reported to me. He basically said, nobody gives a shit because it's an ethnic minority That's area. 100%. This is what I well, said earlier on. It, 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 it always boils down to that. It wouldn't be happening in Chelsea or next to Buckingham Palace, mate. I'm telling you that. Well, let's see what happens in Cheshire. Let's see what happens in Crewe. Yeah. Crew, yeah. yeah, let's yeah. see what the outcome there is. Yeah, that, that story is only about two or three days old. Okay, so that's I'm sure it's going to filter Southall. through. No. Yeah, I'm definitely going to, you know, get in touch with Agast and say, I think, um, you know, if the meeting is no, broadly about as well, contaminated land sites, not just Josh. gas works, then invite these, you know, do some digging and invite people who are affected because this is current. And, you know, Even Josh, this would be Josh, pain, you know, incredibly painful. You know, I'm a homeowner. Mm. And to hear that my home is worthless. And not just that, you know, to add insult to injury, that I'm on Even living on contaminated land that yeah. could potentially be Vampire. shortening my life. Yeah, yeah. That is absolutely <gasps> devastating. Oh, oh, Angela, just, just, just. But it just seems these developers are allowed to get away with it because they put pressure on government. They want legislation weakened because they're arguing. Oh, you know, there's lots of red tape to developing um, contaminate, you know, brownfield sites. But you know, they cut corners because Angela, all you got public health is not their priority. Angela, uh, I think it was Mr. Honourable Mr. Boris Johnson as Prime Minister who said public health are not fit for purpose, OK? Yeah, I sure. think what you need to do... what I think oh, Public you Health England, you're talking about. Yes, Public mm -hmm. Health England. He said they're mm -hmm. not fit for purpose, they should be shut down. Mm -hmm. what, we, what we have to look at is the bigger picture. And before I, before I forget, please, mm -hmm. just hear me out on this one. Mm -hmm. When you say that you went to the school in Springfield Road, is that correct? Yeah, Guru Nanak Sikh Academy. <coughs> well, I think, I think an FOI should be sent to them. And you are just ask a simple question. I hope all the team can understand where I'm coming from. We need an FOI. The helicopter that was giving the kids rides. Who paid for that helicopter? Oh, the, what helicopter are we Barclay? talking about? Joe? Was it Barclay? So tell was tell us more, helicopter. Joe. That Where was this okay. helicopter taking okay. off from? I love, I love, I love aeroplanes and helicopters and you name it, anything that flies. Okay. So I'm sitting in my garden and I see this helicopter coming around and around and around and then going and landing <coughs> near that school, okay? Now, this sort of helicopter, we don't see here. Oh, it's not, it wasn't they a military one. This heli no, 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 no. Yeah, so they yeah. use this helicopter. No, brother, they use this helicopter, okay? Mm -hmm. To take the staff to offshore oil rigs in the sea. Oh, big, okay. big, one of those it big carries, transport ones. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. It carries passengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it yeah. carries passengers, okay? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, a big one. machine. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go, Angela. That should answer the question. When you said that first they were interested, that there were problems. Yes, right. And then all of a sudden the problems went away. Okay? This is all to do with only one name that comes to my mind. Jag Singera is selling the community of Southall out. <coughs> okay. Well, he's, you see, he's, there's he's, nothing he's, else about this. He's, he's, Joe, he's, he's considered like a, you know of the voice of uh, Southall, like the SCA are supposed to be representing the various communities of Southall, but that is not true. Southall community, 
Southall Community Alliance, brother, is the biggest laughing joke of Southall. Okay. Hundred percent. I've seen it with my own eyes. I mean, they, a year ago, I would not have believed you. But uh, uh, attending their are, meetings, uh, you realise what kind of, you know, te tentacles they've got over Southall and how influential they are. And basically, wherever they say, that's they got, you know, if they, if they said that the moon doesn't actually show and it's sunny at night, various organisations in government and around England and the UK would believe them. That is the clout they've uh, sort of kind of established over the last 30 years. And that is the bad. It'd use. be good if they were actually telling the truth and representing, because Southall would never be in this situation. For Christ's sake, all public land is going, you know, um, we, why can't we get a new school? Why can't we get a new library? They should be... They sh they know every single organization, you know, why can't, why have the, hasn't there been anything positive for Southall? They're basically made up of their mind really? that Southall people aren't really worth it, yeah? Doesn't matter where they go, uh, let's turn this into a mini Dubai, mini New York, maybe even Hong Kong. It's all about the developers. It's all about leasehold. Uh, it's word, all about rent. The word, the word I was going to use Okay, Southall Community Alliance are the biggest joke, the biggest fraud that ever existed in Southall. Okay, they've got a meeting this evening. I was told it was on Friday, but I've well, it's the last Thursday. The they've always done it on the last Thursday of yeah. each month. But I've noticed one thing: they don't advertise it anymore. Visit Southall used to have it, and they used to have it on the old website. Yeah. They're unhighlighted now. I received a phone. I, re <coughs> I received a phone call this afternoon. I received a phone call this afternoon that the meeting starts at six o'clock today. Mm -hmm. They have their own people that they're inviting. Those people have personal interests. Of course. Okay. They, they, we they, have, they, we have religious we have religious leaders who are involved in Southall Community Alliance, and we know the purpose of that, okay? Southall is being controlled and is being controlled very tightly. Manipulated. And this is what we have to wake up to, mm -hmm. uh, 100%. Well, we're, we're woke being up. Manipulated. Yeah, Joe, Joe, we're, we're, we're yeah, woke, exactly. mate. We're, we're, we're woke. What we need to do is plan the next step, and it's, it's, it's quite simple. But, uh, you know, we just need to carry on. If we're going to, you know, if we're going to, if we yeah, want any yeah. results, we have to, you know, get together and plan what we need to do next and keep that pressure, you know. Even get the people, get the, get the people out on the 16th of April. Absolutely. To come to the Minim Centre on, on 3 o'clock, <laughs> between 3 and 4. That's right. Okay. Because the last time we were in the Dominion Centre, it was on the, if I can remember the date, I believe it was on the 10th of July, 2019. Sagid, there were people holding up the walls. There wasn't enough space for people to sit. I saw the YouTube and video. The, that, yeah, that was filmed, wasn't and, it? Yeah. And the local <laughs> politicians in Southall, do you know what they were telling the people? Oh, five people turned up. Mm -hmm. This is what the local politicians were saying. Okay, I've got proof. Okay. A lady in Southall who, who was senior in the Labour Party called Mrs. Nuri, she spoke to somebody and said, oh, it doesn't matter. I didn't attend. There were only five people at that meeting. This is how they're manipulating us. The Labour Party, I've always said this, the Labour Party have blood on their hands, okay? They're the ones who took us to the lie war in Iraq, Libya, and Afghanistan, okay? And I stand by that. So why are these silly people still voting for Labour? When, you know, they've destroyed the infrastructure of those countries, and now they're complaining that they've got people coming to this country in dinghies from France. You can't go to somebody's house and destroy the infrastructure 
and they inspect them not to be knocking on your door. And that's exactly what's happening in England. It's called yeah, karma. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's, what it's called it's karma. Costing us in the, it's costing us in the region of £6.5 million per day to house these poor souls. Okay? 650, 6.5 million. 65, 6 million 650. Oh, that's, my God, that's about oh, just under 2 billion, 1.8 billion a year. Thank you. My thank God. You, thank what, you. What thank could you, they sir. have that, the infrastructure that could be? How many schools could be built with that? How many mm -hmm. uh, uh, doctor's surgery, hospitals, uh, community centers, libraries, teachers, you know, more teachers, pay rises to the NHS? Yeah, people have to, I don't know, we have to try. Listen. We are campaigning to educate people. people about how they're being let down by the people they elected. No, 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 but listen, I'm really conscious. Um, <laughs> I don't really want to affect the flow, but Arjun did have his hand up earlier on. Arjun, do you wish to come, come on, back Arjun. into the Arjun. conversation? No, well, I was Arjun. going to bring up something completely different. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it's an open forum. What was said, and uh, it's about you, Les. So I'm not uh, not sure what the council's take on this is, but I think the, the ULEZ is a joke because from what I've heard, not many people can afford a new car, right? And then we're forced to pay £12.50 just to go to work every day. It's just yes. like, how can we, how can we, how can we, how can we afford the £12.50, which is, which amounts to almost £85 a week? Then? Just on paying you this. Can I come in? Can yeah, I come on. in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I spend I spend the majority of my life on the road, yeah? Okay. Number one, I'm very sorry to say that I could not attend the question time meeting with Mr. <coughs> Sadiq Khan in Eating Town Hall. I, I and my face swelled up and it didn't look good, okay? The question I would put to Mr. Sadiq Khan is very simple. Why on earth does he drive around in a Range Rover? That's my number one question. My number two question to Mr. Sadiq Khan is when everybody, if you watch a video film, all right, because our gentleman there looked very bright, young Sufian. I That's watched right. the video film. Mm -hmm. Amrik was on the video film. I watched that and he actually came up on the news. Okay, national news I'm talking about in London, all right? Now, the questions that we have to ask Mr. Sadiq Khan are very simple. Who was that lady sitting next to him? Okay, because he was snookered with questions. And there was a lady that was poking her face into his ear and telling him what to say, okay? That would have been my second question. My third and last question is very simple. I'm paying a fortune at the moment, okay, to go into London, all right? I think congestion charge is £15, all right? Useless, is, I think, is about £11.50 or £12.50, all right? <coughs> it upsets me so much. It upsets me so much, I don't even bother looking at my bank statement, yeah? I'm paying the money. This is my question to Mr. Sadiq Khan. I'm paying, I call it the useless charge because I can't see any benefit from me offering that money okay to the mayor of London unless of course when we're all asleep okay in deep sleep at about three o'clock in the morning Mr. Sadiq Khan and his GLA members come around and they've got these special machines that are cleaning the air it's all <laughs> yeah, bloody yeah. garbage yeah yeah <laughs> I'll rest my case. <laughs> Jan, can can we bring Jan in? Jan, oh, hold on. Before I bring Jan in, okay. Do you know what? Sorry, Jan. Um, do you know what? Do you know what he's doing now? What? He's actually doing a PR stunt, right? Mm. On, about introducing um this super loop bus network to, oh, to yeah, uh, out of London. Tweets. Yeah, I saw the tweet. I saw the um consultation on the TFL website. And Peter he, Mason was on the bus ride with him and yeah, yeah, yeah. Hota. Yeah, every every everybody was there. Everybody yeah. was there. Sorry, what is he I actually doing? Super loop. It's a super loop. He's using oh. 
it's, a, it's basically, do you know like how we got all the express the bus routes? The M25 and the A406, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so like, we got all these express bus routes, like that X140, yeah. which is our nearest express route, the 607. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's basically, he's basically going to turn it into like a super loop bus network, which basically means it's, he's connecting um, buses to go all around London. Quickly, yeah, yeah, yeah like quickly. express services. Yeah, the six oh seven is gonna where Ex you get up. There's gonna be another express yeah, service yeah, yeah. going further towards Oxford Street and, or wherever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And people. No, are I saying, think this is around the kind of like perimeter of London, isn't this it? Is oh, like, that's what. This that's is what like loop is. Yeah, yeah, yeah loop. this is like out of London, out of London. Oh, yeah, a London but, boroughs. Yeah, yeah, out of London boroughs. And okay. Ealing's are out of like, like an out of, of London borough. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why it's and you know what? I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, what about the traffic? It's, hmm. it's, you know, well, it's, they're all they're all they're all going to sit in this traffic whether they introduce the super loop rubbish or not. But what doesn't make sense, loop. right, um, Arjan? We've got a major corridor from Uxbridge all the way to Shepherd's Bush, and the four two seven from Uxbridge to Acton has been removed. Right? You know what Just they to say. Run that service you know what from they Uxbridge say. to. Um, Bridge Road. Do you know that what they say? That's for the, the, for the new excuse, development, isn't it? Their excuse was it's the better link uh, to Southall Station for the Elizabeth line. We all know that is a lie. And uh, we know it's for the housing developments down Merrick Road. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they can walk to the station. These people are not likely to catch a bus to Uxbridge um, or connect to the buses on um, Uxbridge Road. They're, they're going to use Angela. the Elizabeth line if they want to go to Ealing um, or I... Shepherd's Bush, change at Ealing Broadway. It's a five minute walk from those developments. You know what? You the know what it saying... makes no sense. But I'm so angry about it. Sorry, Arjun, let me just finish. Um, my daughter was on the, I believe it was the 207. I dropped her off on a Saturday morning because she's got a class to attend. And uh, this was this is at the University of West London, and she gets the bus back. This is in the middle of Saturday afternoon. She was on the two o seven, got on at Ealing Broadway, embarked at Ealing Broadway. The bus terminated at Ealing Hospital on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. What is that about? Yeah, I don't get it. I, I yeah, it, I did just a, just a footnote. Now I reckon what it is why they've done the four two seven. You're right. It's obviously. Definitely to do with the development. I remember they're building more all the way into the Quake Growth Factory now. It's going to, that's a major site. And they're building a much, much taller building than the one that's laying half wake and there as well. So it might, is it, you, you probably know a lot more about transport and policies than we do as a collective here. Is it maybe transport for London or the government actually gives quite a lot of subsidy to transport for London or the local council? So when there's an X amount, maybe uh, development for happening for, I don't know, 5,000 people, and they can prove that there's an established bus route or public transport route there, and they specifically went out of their way to actually link that particular area to the main archery of London, you know, the rest of the transport network, well, do they get subsidies for that? No. It might be to do with that. So basically, they don't get any subsidies, no nothing. So basically, they have their own, like, planning team, like in sitting uh, on behalf of TfL, where they do like a strategic view of the net bus network, while four, five or six times a year for mm -hmm. some random reason, and then, then <laughs> they have a they have a group of people, right, um, who sit there discuss amongst themselves, like, oh, what can, what can we do to improve the bus network, and then after that happens, they put a consultation out for the uh, for the public to you know give their views on. Uh, give their views on what they're planning to propose. Now, I kind of like, like me and a lot of other people who are like enthusiastic in the buses and stuff like that. Like mm. This is the my geeky side. We kind of we kind of rejected it, so, and like like what the council are doing, they're doing like all these like proposals and consultation. They well, get the council exercises to meet meet the minimum requirements. Yeah, 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 and but then it gets ignored. Yeah. It gets ignored. Mm. They still go ahead with that. <laughs> they get we. It's still they still go ahead with what we're with what they're planning to propose, and then the 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 consultation gets ignored. 
So is it is it obviously look the law is quite defined here. So obviously if the majority of people uh, the whole point of a consultation is to get the gist of what the general public who are going to be affected by that, the, what their views are. If they say no and then they're going ahead with it anyway, what is the point of having a consultation? Exactly. And exactly. is there is there a right to appeal further? And no. people try to no, seriously. Yeah, yeah <laughs> oh, no. God. No, 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 no. There's no chance to appeal further. There's nothing. So, so, so what is it? Then it is it then it's a way basically if you they've just made up their mind and they're just doing this, it's a waste of public money again, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So the the tax pay is, like, you might as well say this this is like what Macron's done in France. I'm raising pension aid, uh, aid from 60 to 64, mate. Forget about disgusting it, yeah. it, it yeah. and all that. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, let's, let's go ahead. You must do that. Become a dictatorship. Yeah, do you know what? It's just like, they, I don't even see people from TFL come out themselves physically to see anything. They're just going by a consultation. Yeah. And how do we know that, you know, that those people who are, that those set of uh, individuals who do me up uh, three, four, five times a year, I, 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 there might be lobbied, there might be connected, you, you know, yeah. with certain individuals. Mm. I mean, that that is what it's all about, networking. You know, powerful organisation, powerful people. You know, I'll scratch, uh, I'll scratch your back, you can scratch mine a bit later on, mate, you know, when you need mm. it. It's, it's all to do with that. So what, what this goes to show you is, you know, all, all these rules and regulations, these consultations, are just there for you to show that we're living in a democratic, uh, you know, Country tick or box, a tick box yeah, exercise. Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, that is so sad. Yeah. That what so I want to ask about, because I'm reliant on traveling by bus when I go to um, an area of London I don't know. And I am very reliant <laughs> on, you know, those indicator screens inside mm. the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You press the bell, tells yeah, you what yeah. the next bus stop is. Mm. I find it absolutely shocking that there isn't an indicator mm. uh, for South or Rail Station. Really? Like do you know what there is? To the area, you know, for the I wouldn't buses, have a clue. The buses that go towards South or Broadway, there's no bus stop. Because there's no bus stop, they decided to get rid of that announcement for that side. Because do you know when they started working on that South of Water side thing? Yeah, yeah. Like whatever year, what, 24? Well, there, there used to be a bus stop opposite in front of the Shahi Nan Kebab. Uh, that's right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they got rid yeah, of the Shahi Nan Kebab and yeah, they got yeah. rid of that bus stop there. But yeah. the announcement is for Park Avenue. Yeah, right? it goes straight to Park but Avenue because there's no yeah. bus stop. Yeah, but yeah. surely, listen. But I mean, I really, for, for visitors, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major. Uh, so, place so, to, to obviously to connect with the of course yeah yeah hundred percent right and, uh, I, I the get... railway and there's no announcement I just find it absolutely ridiculous yeah, yeah you know so what I do you know what I do I tend to walk I just walk it all the way to the station it takes me half an hour yeah, yeah. And... it's just a waste of time isn't it so yeah. so you know the but stop you know, at I, time... I went to oh god where was it um, Olympia uh, caught the twenty eight bus from High Street Chem. Hmm. On the way back, I was reliant on the indicator screen telling me when I arrived at the bus stop for High Street Ken. So if I was a visitor to Southall, travelling along South Road in the direction of um, the Broadway, I wouldn't know that Park Avenue is where I need to get off, other than looking out the window and seeing the bus go sailing past the uh, station. I, I just think it's really bad. You know, like we were speaking about a couple of meetings ago, how we, as you approach South Road from the green, you've got like that little flower bed area. Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember, I don't remember his name who said that, but um, he mentioned getting rid of that flower bed and putting a bus stop there. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, they need, they need to sort it out. You know, yeah. it's just really... And you know or, what? Yeah, just, you know, yeah. they're not bothered about people travelling by bus because, um, you know, it's walking distance uh, for the new residents who live on the Gasworks and on Merritt Road. But not all of us live within walking distance of the station and it's not um, good do, for... And, and do you know what it is? The bus services, tourism. the bus services in itself is shocking. Like, I use the bus practically to get around everywhere. Even if I'm going just... You know, I tend to walk or I get the bus. Those are my two preferred modes of transport. And 
it's absolutely shocking that you know the the way the bus services are run. We have in London. London's the only place, right, where buses aren't funded by the government or directly. The bus companies are not directed by the government directly. We have private privatized companies who run services from different countries like French, Danish, um, like Singapore, and you know they are paid for each route they run they are paid a specific amount of money by tfl themselves right but because we well, because we because they're getting paid a specific amount of money for for 5 years they're paying just they're getting paid i think once for pay for 5 years worth of operation of one bus route or maybe 7 years um that's why and this is why bus companies only care about the money the money there's the money they get and then they they profit that money somehow yeah i think yeah. it's just the assumption that we have a really good service in london and that is not you know yeah my and then, but and, can we can we bring jan because i know jan yeah. been waiting patiently so jan over to you yeah it was just about the ules um <clears throat> I just wanted to make people aware something that I was made aware of this week. And thankfully, it now means that um, my car is exempt for another four years. Um, if you are registered disabled or um, <clears throat> and I also looked into this, that uh, there's three categories now. One, that your car is classed as um, disabled class. Two, um, I can't remember what number two was, but you can look it up. But three, if you're receiving any mobility component on PIP, it and you can you send off the you fill in the form online to the TFL, um, and they will exempt your car for four years. So I've just they've just I sent off the form on Tuesday night, and by Wednesday morning I got an email back from them saying that my car is now exempt for another four years. Now that's that's good news, Jan. But do now, you this think is this only is widely new... known about? So I mean, how did you find out? Uh, my local, I, I took my car into my local garage on Monday to have a light bulb, fit, you know, light fitted on there. And we were just talking about ULEZ and he was saying how much it's affecting his business because because of the ULEZ, people are not having their cars serviced and people are not spending money on their cars now because they're going to have to get rid of them or they're not going to drive them as much. And we just got talking and he he happened to mention about if you had a blue badge, blah, blah, blah. But when I looked into it, it's not specifically if you've got a blue badge, it's if your vehicle class is, I think it's, a, it's if your car is t registered as a disabled car. But for me and other people, it's if, if you're getting the mobility component on PIP. And all well, you have hopefully to do, people are going to hear this, Jan. Yeah, and, that's um, why I wanted to find bring out because, for themselves, because I don't you think have to, probably it's been Google, widely publicised. If they go on to just on, if they just Google um, ULES and disabled or ULES and blue badge, it gives you the three components that you have to. And all I had to do was uh, scan in a copy of my V5 document of my car, a copy of uh, the disability letter from the DWP, um, and a copy of my passport. And within literally 12 hours, I got the reply to say, my car is now exempt. I got the grace. They call it a grace period of four years. That that is good news because at the meeting with Sadiq Khan, you said that you'd have to give up one of your jobs because you wouldn't yeah, be able to yeah. afford the ULES yeah. charge. So that's really good news. Yeah. And you know, I have to listen how ordinary people are affected. Mm. And I, I know think this grace Amrit, period has yeah. just been implemented recently because when I looked at it a few months ago this component wasn't on there yeah you know like, so I, I think, think you know I mean, I hopefully because i mean my, i see a lot of disabled bays on my road yeah i told so, one of my neighbors who yeah um he gets pip because of uh an illness and he, he can now because he was really worried i mean he's on sick leave um and i don't want to go too much into it yeah, but sure. he's on sick leave and he can't afford to change his car he won't get a loan because he's not working um, and he was really worried about it. So I told him about it this week and he's now going to be exempt as well. 
Well, that's good because, you know, it's just ordinary mm. people. You know, we have to look at what's going on in the world, cost of living. I'm sure everybody's in the same boat as me, getting letters saying, you know, the rent, the mortgage is going up, uh, council tax. Has anybody looked at their council tax letter yet? You know, that's going up. Everything's going up. Broadband's Everything's gone going up. up. Everything's uh, going up. Just... The water bill's turned up. You know, that's gone up. Yeah, everything's going up. Angela. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this, you know, this is real life for many people. And, you know, I entirely understand the frustration um, of people who need um, their car to get to work if they're, you know, working far flung places. Yet, you know, I'm not eligible for the scrappage scheme. Um, and we know with businesses, uh, I don't know, Joe might have a view on this. The charge is going to be passed on, isn't it, to the consumer? You know, we, the electrician's not going to pay we, it. You know, the we, boiler we, service we repair is not going to pay it. It's going to be passed on to their customers. We, unfortunately, have not had a £21,000 pay rise like Peter Mason has. <laughs> how ridiculous how ridiculous is that when we get told that the council doesn't have funding the council has no money but yet we can find the money yeah for the chief executive Absolutely. okay first we sack him then we hire him and the same we can do with peter mason Twenty-one thousand pounds pay rise are they having a ready law? Well, Joe, I'd I'm like sure to ask are. the question, what do our councillors actually do for the money they get? I mean, I, 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 I'm staggered. Jack. What I mean, what do they actually do now? Because I've contacted a certain councillor um, who approached yep. me at the Sadiq Khan meeting, um, trying mm. to say, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, you haven't even you haven't even replied to my email that I said, oh, no, no. If I had an email from you, I would have replied straight away. I said, but I emailed you. I WhatsApp you. I texted you and you didn't. Oh, no, no, no. I would have replied. And then when she checked her emails, oh, yeah, it came in September. And I said, yeah. And have you replied to me? She said, no. Well, tell me about it now. And I said, Do you know what? I can't be bothered. You ha I, if I've gone to the trouble of emailing you. You should have responded to me straight away, not five months maybe later. She had a death in the, maybe she had a death in the family. And she Probably, went yeah. Another one. Hmm. I mean, Sadiq has lost all credibility, right, with me, because on Sahota, it's supposed to be people's question time, allowed two members um, of Ealing Labour who were councillors. One is Polly Newstub. I think her name is, and she is the council. I don't remember Jan and Joe, who at um, Verenda Sharma's meeting at St John's Church was allowed to ask multiple questions. Yeah, I remember that. I remember. Oh, were you that there really? as well? Oh, yeah. that, that was the first meeting I attended. Was this uh, of his? Was um, Sharma's yeah. Sharma's thing? And I remember, uh, I remember you were set because I didn't know you properly at the time, Angela. But then you were saying to, you were referring to me as a young man, and you you were like, "Oh, what about the young man?" I remember that. Oh right, sorry, I don't remember that part. But it was frustrating but, but it was because frustrating why are they allowed I had a platform my, yeah. above and beyond ordinary members? You know, why are they allowed to ask more than one question? You know, I didn't even. So get, basically, I didn't even get one as in. chair. I didn't went even get... to Polly News and this sorry I can't remember her name but she's a councillor for Acton and this councillor for Acton asked a question and within about five minutes or less got up and walked out and left the meeting so you know it's all about you know easy questions to make him look good make him shine it's not really people's question time is it it's um an exercise in manipulating is it the public. Hashani? Uh, one Sorry? Of the is it Blairina Hashani, one of the councillors? Mm, I North don't think I... Acton, because there's mm. like you got North Acton, East Acton, and South Acton. No, I can't remember her name. I don't think that's her name. Because uh, Acton's Labour, so obviously. Yeah, yeah. But you can see the, you know, the, the yeah. manipulation really of the public because they're not ordinary 
members of the public, their counsellors, yeah. and they didn't declare that they are counsellors um, in the same political party as the mayor. You know, it's just a it's just a joke, really, isn't it? Um, Do you know what? I'll, um, if you, for anyone that isn't aware of the super loop that I'm on about, by the way, I'll I'll on Twitter uh, keep an eye on my Twitter. I'll post the link and just retweet it around because I got sent like um, a link to a article and I'll send a video. I'll somehow manage to refer it from my WhatsApp to my Twitter page when I, when I'm next on my when I next get on to Twitter because I haven't been on Twitter in a while. Um, please please do. And I'll I'll and I'll I'll show you. Yeah, but I, I mean, also, it seems, it seems link, to me, yeah, it's, it seems to be link, frequent occurrence. Sorry to cut across you. No worries. Um, apologies. Um, no. That buses are terminating at Ealing Hospital. You know, Ange I Angela, have to get a phone because my kids, oh, WhatsApp, you know, I'm running late. I have to wait for the next bus. This is an everyday occurrence. Yeah, yeah. It's an everyday occurrence. Even on the weekend, even on Sunday, the traffic is so bad in Southall. That buses don't even get past the Prince of Wales pub. They're stuck oh God, yeah. outside the Prince of Wales pub for about half an hour at a time. I believe you. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen how bad it is. That's what. And that's... just to add, you know, Lidl is closing next month. Um, Lidl? Not not Lidl um, in Ballsbridge, the but the one um, on uh, the Uxbridge Road, um, oh, yes, opposite yes. side to the police station. But a lot of people rely upon that who live, you know, walking distance to do their shopping. You know what, you and know can what you imagine you on the what? 195 bus from South Road, how long it's going to take on a Sunday, for instance? And I said jokingly to somebody, you know, by the time you do your shopping and return on the 195 to, you know, New Southall, your frozen food would have melted. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And I, you know, I suspect probably that site will be another site for high rises. It's a prime location, question, isn't Ange? it? What's happening to the Sunrise Radio site? That's gonna be another block of flats, I believe, John. Is it? Yeah. Somebody tell somebody said to me, and I don't know how true it is, that there was gonna be a hotel. A hotel? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know where she got this from, but she lives yes. on the she lives on the estate there, um, and she keeps asking me what's happening to the sunrise, um, you know, site. And I said oh, I would ask you a lot, but um, last time I heard well, that, it. that would make sense in this, you know, because of again, the Elizabeth line. Mm. So they'll be advertising. Oh, you're only. Uh, X number of minutes from Bond Street. Is it 14 minutes or whatever well, it, to Bond Street? I, I don't know. I, I don't remember now off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. But Jan, last and then you're I... only so many minutes to Heathrow, cheaper yeah. than, um, you know, where are the hotels for Heathrow? On the Bath Road? Uh, you've cheaper. got Terminal 4 and uh, Terminal 4. It's like that. Oh, mm. my God. It's, it's, if you're travelling to Heathrow, Terminal 4 and 5, from South, you've got to leave early. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Jan. So have you heard that it's going to be more flats? I heard it's more flats, Jan, because okay. because of the Elizabeth line. Do you know those um factories? Those old sweet Royal Sweet like Indian sweet yeah. factories. Yeah, where the, where those the are being, arches used to be. Yeah, 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 behind the station. That's being those are knocked down already as well. That's right, flats. Jan. It's grim. Well, Rat pack and stack in South, or we're not going to be able to move. One other thing, I one other thing I wanted to bring up before I go was: is anybody else noticing how bad now the parking is getting on top of pavements? Yeah, yeah, um, it happens. It happens all the time. Where yeah, down my I street. mean, I know that uh, the council have been and with the police have been going out on the weekends doing South of Broadway, but you know the Down Brent Road and Western Road. You just can't walk past, you can't, on a daily occurrence now, I am having trouble walking on the pavements because of the amount of cars that are parked on top of the pavements. Yeah, and then there's no enforcement. And, uh, you know, as you say, what about people who are in wheelchairs? Well, this is what happened, parents with push chairs. Day. You can't, because we've got a friend, you know, who is in a wheelchair and... There are so many obstacles on the pavements. Well, you know, the, the flight tipping, but obviously Anne, cars would just, you know, how would he get past? He can't. Do you, know what, do, you know, 
Sorry, go on, Jan. The day before yesterday, I was out walking because I walk, go walking every morning, and this poor woman with a baby in a in a pushchair or a buggy, she had to walk out in the road to get round a vehicle that was parked on top of the on top of the pavement. Yeah, it's totally unacceptable. But you know what? Peter Mason's far more interested in digging up the pavement on the corner of Johnson Street and Balfour Road and um, putting some plants. Apparently there's going to be some um, landscaping on the corner. And uh, I can see I drove past today, re at the pavement. It's utter nonsense, right? Because it's not so dealing money, with... Angela? Eh? Waste of taxpayers' money. Waste of taxpayers' money. It's not dealing with the broken pavements where uh, Jan's well, neighbour fell over and hurt herself very badly. Now, all the broken paving stuff, all the broken pavement where the tarmac is uh, degraded. But yeah, he's digging up on the corner of uh, Johnson Street and Balfour Road and sticking some plants there. Yeah, you know what that is about? That's about they've got that funding to put, make Ealing greener. You know the trees they promised. So they're not doing it for free. And it's surprising he's not doing it in his own ward. But it is his ward, yeah? It is, well, isn't the it? ward yeah. that he doesn't visit, right? Yeah. And just round the corner from there, they haven't finished refurbishing the playgrounds. Right? <laughs> Where? Which playground? <laughs> Hey, what's Spencer, that? Spencer Street, around the corner from there, you've got Spencer Street playgrounds. They're not finished. And the excuse I was given, they're waiting for better weather to realign yeah. the Mooga, you know, so you can actually play a proper game of basketball and football. Oh, right, yeah, you're, you're what you're talking about. Messing about with the pavement on the corner of Johnson Street, digging it up and sticking a few plants there. <laughs> oh, good news. You know, you know, but you know it's such a nonsense, right? When there's so many broken pavements, so much fly tipping. Do you know how much fly tipping there is in uh, my area? Why like not? Every so, day. Angela, Angela, why not get Fiona from London Place to focus on that first before we start anything on Emerald Square? We well, I think we, we're, we're going to make movement on... Union, Emerald Square. I'm not saying we can't incorporate. No, because um, what, I don't see the point in starting. Um, I don't see the point in starting Emerald Square when. We could do both, but I mean that was the basis of getting her, you know, her attention and getting her involved. Yeah. With Emerald Square. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you, meant, you mentioned multi something. Arjan, we can multitask. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to multitask, but I can try it. Clean air for Saturdays. Uh, Gasworks Communities United, the Emerald Square campaign, Spencer yes. Street playgrounds. You know, we've got. And then you got your daytime job as, as well. Much, yeah, my daytime job, but yeah, we we can do it. But you know, it's such a nonsense. I've got. It's going I've got, on. I've got yeah? a lot of my play you're at the not moment, dealing so. with you yeah. know the broken pavements where somebody tripped and had a very serious accident. You know. I hope, um, you know, I'm not over exaggerating by saying that an older person, it could have killed them, you know, if they face planted. And, um, you know, it's just ridiculous, really ridiculous. I've got a lot of stories that I could say about everything that's been mentioned, but I won't. Yeah. I'll no consultation with the community yeah, that they no. are serving about what are the priority issues, yeah? Yeah. But anyway, I'm conscious of the time. Um, it's 16 um, minutes past nine. Does anybody else want to say anything before we close the meeting? Oh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a success story with Emerald Square. I was reading on social media, some charities got involved with it and they want to do it up. Yeah, that's that's what me and Angela are involved in. We're yeah. involved oh, brilliant. in that. And we're, we, we, Angela managed to get um, in touch with a charity called London Play. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, we're speaking with uh, a lady called Fiona from there, and we're working uh -huh. with her to um, to, uh, right. to, uh, re to just do up Emerald Square. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and, um, and Angela, Angela yeah. went out with her daughter. Or was it Saturday to that's do, right. Do yeah. leaflets, and we might actually get one of the residents involved in spreading the word. So that's right. Yeah. That's oh, excellent. Right. Start small and yeah. build from there. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I think it's time to close the meeting. Yeah.
Definitely. So can I thank everybody for attending? And I have to apologise that we didn't have a meeting in February. That's my fault. I wasn't organised and not on the case. Obviously, uh, the next meeting is in April. I haven't got my calendar to hand. Um, are you happy for it to be the last Thursday of the month? Last Thursday, last Thursday. So that'll be Thursday the 27th of April. Friday, Angela, please. Friday. Well, we don't do want to clash it with the SCA. Are we going to attend the next SCA meeting, Joe? Well, do you want to switch it back? It's my fault. Do you want to switch it back to the last Tuesday of the month? I think Friday will work best. The problem is I, I can't do a Friday unless somebody else Wednesday. wants to do it, but I definitely can't attend on a Friday. Wednesday Tuesday would be better for me. So what day? Tuesday, not, Tuesday. not Thursday. Yeah, because originally I think it used to be Thursday, Tuesday, then we switched yeah, yeah, it to yeah, Tuesday. Can we switch it back to Tuesday, the last Tuesday? Tuesday the 25th of April, that'll be there, Angela. Yeah? Yeah, that'll be the Thank 25th Thank you very much for that. Yeah. yeah. And I'll be I'll obviously make sure that um, in good time I'll share the Eventbrite link. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, hopefully, you know, we're going to be able to report back actually at that meeting um, on the meeting with uh, Imperial College. But obviously, we're going to work hard. Um, you know, so, Jan. So, so you know, sorry, one thing, uh, Angela, before we go, yeah. so this we've discussed. Uh, the what's happening with Imperial for 16. So that's the weekend after Easter, yeah? So it's about two weeks and two yeah. days left. So yeah. how, how are we going to coordinate, you know, the efforts to get as many people as as, as we possible? Are we going to set up a WhatsApp group? Can we or... set up a WhatsApp group? And Yeah. yeah. And obviously that? I can take forward some of the things that were discussed about yeah, contacting yeah. the I mean, radio stations. What that, obviously we've got a few individuals here. Yeah. We've got all I can look at members. them. But, you know, everyone's got an idea. system, because you were right, you know, the loudspeaker's not really loud enough. Um, uh -huh. oh, yeah, yeah. Sharing messages on Twitter and Facebook. But um, can we can, can I set up um, a WhatsApp group? And Fine with me, you can yeah. go ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then we can decide how we can really get this message out. And, um, you know, I would say to each and every one of you, talk to your neighbours as well. Let them know. Mm. Word of, of mouth. Do you know what I mean? They, you know because they're going to trust you of, uh, that you're an honest person. You're not going to waste their time, mm. you know, telling them to turn up at a meeting. That's, um, you know, totally, totally different from you know. what they've done. You know, they're going to look to you that, yeah, you know, you know what you're <laughs> on about. Yeah. Well, yeah they'll, be saying, they'll be saying, hey, where's our free TV, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to suggest. Yeah. But okay, well, shall we right, shall we close? Guys, I'm gonna go. So. Yeah, shall we close the meeting? Yeah. Thank you, Jan. Thank yeah, you. See you soon, everyone. Everybody who's yeah, attended, yeah, take yeah, care. Yeah, just, Bye. I'm just in a meeting. All right, I'm yeah. gonna end. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Angela. And Angela, okay. can I speak to you? Angela. Oh, hello. Right, hello. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hello, stop. Hello. I'm gonna stop the recording. So formally closing the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'll see Zoom everybody um, next month. Yeah, group. Yeah, I just need to...